Okay, these are the precipitation notes. So uh, those of you that are at home can follow along. I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly, but you can always stop or pause or rewind. Uh, so anyway, we'll go through half of them and then there'll be a second video to go through the other half. So uh, precipitation, it says precipitation is any form of moisture or water falling from the sky. This includes rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Usually the temperature of the ground is warmer than the temperature high in the air. We will look at how this fact makes precipitation. So if you look at the picture, it shows you that warm, moist air rises, heat always rises. And as it does, it gets to the atmosphere because the atmosphere is colder than the ground. And as it gets colder, the uh, moisture in the air condenses back into a liquid, makes a cloud, and at some point it gets heavy enough to rain. All right, when the moisture is on the ground, the sun warms it up. The sun is an inefficient, is inefficient at heating air in the sky, so it is cold there. So in other words, what it's saying is uh, the sun doesn't heat air well. It heats the ground and things that can soak up the heat, but it doesn't heat air well. It doesn't heat sand well either. The desert's always cold in the winter for the meerkats because uh, the, the ground doesn't absorb heat very well. Anyway, the warming causes water to evaporate, which means turn from a liquid to a gas. Since heat rises, the warmed evaporated water rises. As it rises, it cools because it is colder high in the sky. This cooling condenses, turns water uh, from a gas to a liquid. Anyway, the water from a gas to a liquid, this cooling uh, condenses the water back into a liquid and it falls back to the earth as precipitation. So it's showing you a little diagram over here about the temperature and how it gets colder as you go up because there's less to be for the sun to heat up up there, so uh, it's colder up there. Heat rises, so it makes sense that the warm air would rise up. And as it would rise up, it would cool, condense back into a liquid and drip down. The sky, uh, the, or excuse me, the difference in temperature between land and sky will help determine what type of precipitation falls, if any. And there's a YouTube video, this link is on Canvas. Okay, if evaporated water in the sky falls from the clouds and does not go through freezing temperatures on its trip to the earth, it will fall as rain. It could thaw on the way down as well and make rain. So the uh, precipitation could fall frozen if the clouds are frozen, but on the way down, if it's not frozen there, it could thaw out. Uh, or it could not be frozen in the clouds and fall through air that is not frozen and be rain. Sleet. Sleet comes out of the clouds as rain and freezes on the way down. If it froze in the clouds, it would be going directly from uh, a gas to a liquid and it would be a, a snowflake if it did that. But since it's not frozen in there and it freezes on its way down, it makes a little clump. Anyway, sleet comes out of the clouds as rain and freezes on the way down. It is possible for snow to partially thaw and fall as sleet. Freezing rain. Freezing rain comes down as, a liqu as liquid rain, but freezes when it touches frozen surfaces such as the ground. So it looks like a glaze over everything. Oh, it, says, it leaves a glaze over everything like the picture on the right. This is like a sign. So it doesn't freeze, the water doesn't freeze until it hits a frozen surface. That's what freezing rain is. A lot of people get sleet and freezing rain confused. Sleet freezes on its way down and freezing rain freezes on contact. Hail. Hail typically occurs when it's very windy. Um, it begins as rain. Uh, the wind blows the raindrop 
upward where it is colder. As it goes up, it collects more water and gets bigger. So you've got rain, it falls, it gets blown up in the sky and it catches other raindrops and freezes and as it catches more raindrops on its co it, the re new raindrops freeze on its surface and it gets bigger and bigger at some point when the wind gust stops the rain falls and then it gets blown up again by another wind gust and it catches more raindrops which freeze on it and it gets bigger so uh anyway the frozen raindrop falls until the wind I don't know if falls is a thing for you or not. It's already on here. Until the wind blows it up again, getting bigger each time. The process can re repeat itself several times. It will get big enough that it is not windy enough to blow it back upward. So at some point, it's going to weigh so much that the amount of wind that's at, at currently happening isn't strong enough to pick it up again, and it'll fall to the ground. Um, it says, if you cut open a hailstone you will see the layers and be able to count how many times it was blown upward. And you can actually see the layers in the picture of how many times it's been blown back up. Okay, so we will, how much time have we done here? Six minutes, we'll do a second.